Okay, we're good, Jerry. I think uh, we got everybody. We got a lot of people pouring in here, and uh, we are getting ready to go. For all you guys that are out there, let's um, you guys, uh, especially a lot of you that have been on in previous uh, webinars, we've got a real treat for you tonight with my good friend and buddy Jerry Costica. He's going to be talking about mindful marketing. And so what I'd like to have you guys do right now is in your chat box, if you can hear me, uh, just type in, yes, I can hear you. And also, if you can see the screen, there'll be a big, a big uh, brainiac picture Jerry's got here called that's got mindful marketing on the bottom there. Just say, yes, I can see the screen, and yes, I can hear you. It's good to have all you guys. Uh, boy, we've got a whole bunch of people. we got this. Let's see. Shauna, Hello King and Family, George, John, Bud and Sandy, Nicole. We have people from all over the world joining us today. I was watching some of the stats coming in for registrations. People from European Union, uh, Z uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, from Indonesia, from Malaysia, uh, people from everywhere. So this is going to be a real good one here tonight. We're excited to have Jerry on the call. For the webinar, he's going to be teaching us a lot of great stuff about uh, his marketing program and what he does. And, and by the way, I use Jerry's materials too faithfully um, just because they flat out work. So he'll be talking with you about uh, how to use the mindful marketing methodology and then some of the materials that he has in the magazines and brochures. Okay, we got Yes, I Can Hear You. Uh, just I want to make sure we can see everybody. You see the Brainiac? Yes, hear and see. Yes, hear and see. Okay, good. So we are ready to go. We're going to get started here tonight. This is recorded, and you will get a replay of this um, as we go forward. So that's always part of this webinar process. I want to welcome everybody uh, that's that's pouring in here. We got geez, a ton of people here, Jerry. I'm really excited about this. Seems like more and more and more people are running in. But I do want to give a little introduction to Jerry. A lot of you know Jerry Costica. Uh, Jerry, you're a 6A. What are you now? You're way the heck up there, I know. 6A42 four, four right now. 6A42. And, uh, you know, I, for, I first met Jerry when I started this uh, project uh, right away, and we immediately hit it off and uh, become good friends. And, uh, you know, he's taught me a lot of the ropes, at least in this Kangen project, and then I brought a lot of the marketing and sales to it as well. But, uh, you know, this guy knows what he's doing. Uh, he's done, you know, he started with Daniel D. McCauley, and he's built his own organization, but he does a lot of things in the area of marketing and sales and demonstrations. And I was really excited when I talked to him. We met for lunch not too long ago about uh, coming on to the webinar here and sharing his mindful marketing program uh, with you. This guy brings a lot of deep experience to any project, any marketing project, and so with that, uh, Jerry, I'd like to introduce you and have you take the floor here. Thanks a lot, Peter. Uh, I want to say thank you f to Peter for inviting me to be part of this uh, webinar today. Um, also want to thank everybody who's who's on. Um, the uh, You know, I know there's other things you could be doing with your Sunday early evening to later evening, and I know we have people from all over the world, so it might be Saturday or even Monday for some of you. So I want to thank you for taking um, – Taking your business seriously, you know, because making sure that you're at something like this, um, even though it might be in the in the convenience and comfort of your own home, taking the time to be on something like this is, uh, it, it shows that you're serious about your business and succeeding, okay? So what I want to do is, because we ha I have a lot of information I want to cover, and I do want to be able to try to open this up for specific questions from people, should they have them. So I want to jump right into this, okay? Now, Peter's going to be kind of my... We'll toggle through on my PowerPoint. So if you guys hear me saying click, I'm talking to Peter, okay? So you don't have to worry. So <laughs> Peter, let's go ahead and start with the first slide. All right. Um, what I want to do is I really want to to get you guys to understand when I say mindful marketing, what I actually mean, okay? So mindful marketing, what actually is it, okay? And this is kind of something I've developed. It is, in my opinion, it's marketing with very clear direction intention and purpose and it might sound like that's a given that if somebody's going to be doing marketing efforts um, you know that they're going to really know what their goal is and know what they're going to do um, unfortunately that's not the, that's not the case for a lot of people they do this haphazard marketing effort that it has haphazard re re return for them it, it's not as effective as they would want it to be so what I think people need to understand is that Mindful marketing, to me, 
it means that one, you have personal knowledge, okay? Because you have to make sure that you kind of know your stuff if you're going to be effective. Now, obviously, it's going to be a lot more difficult for somebody who is brand new in this business to have a lot of information. Why? Because the stuff that we cover, folks, it is not run of the mill. It is not like readily known to everybody. That's one of the that's one of the reasons that we have the opportunity to make the kind of money we do is because most people that we'll run into are not familiar with alkaline water. They're not even familiar with the pH importance of the body. Okay, so your personal knowledge is absolutely critical. Um, understanding your prospect's perception. It's important that you understand how your prospect is going to interpret the information that you're going to give them. Okay, it's extremely important because if you don't, if you're missing that component, then a lot of your efforts will be unfruitful because of the fact that your approach is probably going to be wrong. All right. Uh, <laughs> the next one is really important. It's knowing how, when, and why to use marketing tools. Okay, certain one. I mean, it's we're going to get into that a little bit deeper, but you know, it is important to know the the how, the when, and the why. Okay, because if you miss any piece of that, again your efforts are probably going to be far less fruitful than, than they could be. Then it's about understanding how to combine the water, okay, during the sampling process with information to create an actual experience that will, the experience for the prospect that will lead to a sale for you, okay? Because that's what we're really trying to do. We're trying to create an experience, okay? The reason that this is mindful marketing and not mindful advertising is because there's a difference between advertising and marketing, okay? Advertising is simply putting out some information out there about a specific product in an attempt to get a person to purchase that product. Now, I think everybody would agree that we're trying to do much more than that. And that's why what we actually do is marketing. We're trying to teach people about an unfamiliar concept we're trying to show them about a product that can be life-changing. One of the other things we're trying to do is open up the doors of opportunity for them to become part of the business side of what we do. All of those things combined is why this is different than advertising, okay? And obviously, I think that mindful marketing, what it really equates to is smart marketing. Peter, could you give me one more click? What I want to teach you guys how to do is let the tools do the hard work for you, okay? That's really what this is about. So let's go ahead and jump right into this to the next one. Okay, so why, why do we need to be mindful in our marketing efforts? Why do we really need to think about it, okay? Here's why. Because distributors, especially new ones, need to realize a very harsh reality. Peter, can you click me once, please? Here's the deal, you guys. <laughs> Most of our friends and family, especially when we're new, they will not believe us. Okay? They're going to think we're full of it. All right? And let me explain why. Okay? But, yeah, this is – but why not? Why wouldn't they believe us? The reality is because they know us. <laughs> I know. That might sound a little bit funny. Peter, go ahead and give it another click. See, folks, they know the real us. They know what our education has been. They know what our experiences have been at least in general, okay? They know what our habits are. They know our failures. And let me tell you something that you have to understand. Unless you have been super duper successful in almost everything that the outside world has seen, you're going to be judged by your failures, not your accomplishments, okay? And why is that? <laughs> because most of us tend to have a heck of a lot more failures than accomplishments. That's just a fact, okay? So unfortunately what happens is the people that we know, although they know and love us, they also know us, okay? The know and love is one thing, but the know is a whole nother one, okay? Because folks, when it comes to others, perception is reality, okay? And unfortunately it's gonna be their perception. Now I want you to see real quick what our perceived reality is, all right? We get introduced to this amazing water. We learn some incredible new information. We're jazzed, man. We're like, this is awesome. I can't believe I didn't know this already. This is amazing. We start drinking the water. We experience the effects that the water can create for us. We start feeling better. We're sleeping better. We, we have more energy. We're, you know, for some people, they're pooping more often. 
which is, I know that sounds crazy, but for some people, that's a big deal, okay? We get excited. We're like, oh, my God, I can't believe this has been, this has been amazing. I need one of these machines. We get excited. We get a machine. Then we decide, you know what? I want to share this information with others. I want to share this water with others, and I want to see what might happen. May I, you know what? I feel so great. I want to share this. So we start sharing the water and our newfound info. Okay, we are, we have become this amazing health and wellnesses and business resource. This is how we see it. Okay, so this is how we imagine others will see us. Go ahead and click it, Peter. This is how we think they see us as this dynamic. Wow, this is incredible. I've got my drinking bottle in one hand. I've got my sharing bottle in another. I've got my computer. I'm taking notes. I'm on the phone making appointments. I've got my tablet checking the, the, the latest water reports. I'm, I'm checking everything out. This is how we think people should view us. Peter, go ahead and click it. But folks, realistically, this is more likely what our, what our friends and family see. <laughs> Ta -da. Yeah. Okay. And let me explain why. Go ahead and click it, Peter. The reason is because most of the people that you know, friends and family, they've probably seen you and I, us, more like picture number two than picture number one. So their picture in their brain of number two is more familiar to them of us than that number one, than that super dynamo. Okay. So their perception of us is what creates the reality of us. All right? Peter, go ahead and click it if you could. That's why the marketing materials take us out of the equation. It takes us out of... They can't judge us as the source of information. That's one of the main reasons that utilizing marketing materials, especially when you're brand new, is absolutely crucial. It takes us out of the mix. Okay? Go ahead, Peter. That is the reason that they're important. Okay? Now, here's the main intentions of marketing materials. Number one, to provide facts and data. Number two, to introduce people, our prospects, to new concept or ideas. Number three, provide or reinforce general information. Number four, respond to or refute misinformation provided by others. Establish or emphasize credibility. Address specific subjects or topics. And you know what? Sometimes it's to flex our muscle, okay, as a company. Go ahead, Peter. Okay. The first thing I'm going to talk to you guys about are the special edition magazines that we've come up with. They really have changed the face of an adjic, all right? Now, I know this is going to sound almost ridiculous, but there's some people that don't know how to use these magazines. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, Jerry, how do you not know how to use a magazine? Well, the, the reality is these were created with very specific intention. Remember I said that? Intention, direction, and purpose? These were created with very specific intentions. But unfortunately, a lot of people are not aware of what they are because although when, when I wrote these, I, in my mind, I knew exactly what the intention was. Each article, I knew what I was trying to get to be the end result after a person reads that. But there's some people that don't know. And so what I want to do is draw some clarification about these so that at the end of this, at the end of this webinar, you'll be able to take one of these pieces of, of marketing materials and utilize it to its fullest potential, okay? That you'll be able to utilize it the same way I do as the person who wrote them, okay? First off, you have to understand that the strength and power of these magazines, the, the number one aspect of the strength and power is that they are magazines, that they're actually printed, okay? Now, the reason that's important is that these days, in this digital era, printed actually means something, okay? Digital is not better, not when it comes to marketing stuff. It's easier, but it's not better. And you know what? I'm going to just throw this out there. I know that there's distributors out there that simply do not get it. And the reason I put that in red, because red means caution. It means, whoa, the reason I say that there's some distributors out there that don't get it is I know for a fact, and they might be on right now, there might be some of them that aren't, and I know that this is this is the case, that there's some people who have purchased my magazines, and as soon as they got them, they ran over to their scanner, they put them on there, they scanned each one of the pages and created digital a PDF files from them, and then started emailing them over to people. 
So they figure, oh, I'm being really smart. I spent a couple dollars on one, and now I'm getting to send them out to tons and tons of people. Yeah, let me tell you what you've accomplished if that's the way that you've approached this. You've accomplished of sending some stuff into an inbox that is going to join a bunch of other junk in an inbox that will most likely never be looked at. Okay? So what you end up doing is kind of fooling yourself into thinking that you're accomplishing something that you're actually not. All right? Now, one of the things that everybody has to understand, too, and this is something that you can talk to our prospects about when it comes to some of these other companies, okay? Because I know that Tyant has, they have a digital consumer report thingy, and Life Ionizer has one, a digital one. When you talk to your prospects, one of the things you can ask them is, why don't they, why don't they produce it? Why don't they actually make it, print it, and send you a hard copy? Because if that information is valuable enough to print, it's valuable enough to read. But those other guys don't do it. You want to know why? Because there's no way they're going to they're put the expense out for putting something like that together in an actual professional printed version. They won't do it. Why? First off, they don't have enough people to send it to to make it worth their while. See, most printers, if they're going to print up just maybe a couple hundred copies of something, it, it's going to cost a lot of money, especially if you do it professionally. Okay, Just so you guys understand, I have to make a huge financial investment to even make these things available because I have to, I have to order tens of thousands of these things for my printers to even give me a break on price enough to where I can offer them to you guys at a low enough price that it makes sense for you to use them. Okay, So it's important that when you're talking to your prospects, if they mention something, oh, I saw this digital consumer. Well, you know what? If you saw that, that's great. Why don't you have them contact that company and ask for a hard copy and say to them, you know, if their information is so valuable, why aren't they even willing to put, you know, uh, put the outlay of expense to get it printed so I can hold one in my hand. I can flip through the pages. I can look at that cover to cover. That It'll make people think, Okay. Now, one of the things I also want you to understand is about these magazines, They're, they all have a cover price because I didn't want to put complimentary copy on these, even though that's what you should be using them for as a distributor is giving them to somebody else and not asking them to pay for it, unless it's another distributor that's going to use it for marketing purposes. But without that price on the front, there's no perceived value. The information becomes, it, it becomes worthless. So that, that $9.95 price point that's on this, that cover price is to establish a value in the minds and eyes of our prospects, okay? That's what I want you to understand that that's there for. Also, it's a familiar format. People are used to magazines. They know that magazines, for the most part, are something that people utilize to get information that they would want to find out, okay? The other thing is it's a tangible, physical item that people can take anywhere. And I think that it has become more and more important to people because, you know, Digital, like I said, it's great, but you know what? There's there's certain things that just lose their punch. Okay, they absolutely lose their punch. So hey, having the actual physical item that a person can look through, that they can that they can take with them where they want it, where they're going, they can they can reference back to it any time. That a lot of times becomes important. And and also, people, I don't know. It's almost like they have a higher respect for something in print than something that's just digital. Because they know digital can just, like, whatever. Okay? All right. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide. I'm not even sure okay. what the next slide is. Hey, Jerry, I, want, I just want to make one comment related to that that's, sure. that, that I use. It's really successful, guys, because I use Jerry's magazines. In fact, I was using them just this last week. And when I'm in the home and I bring uh, one of the magazines, I open it up. We had a couple people that had type 2 diabetes. And so Jerry's got a really good magazine about the health and wellness. And I opened it up right to the type 2 diabetes. The guy's name was Leonard. And I said, because Leonard's son, who's only 22, has diabetes, which shouldn't be the case. And so I said, look, here's a really good article to show to your son about type 2 diabetes as it relates to the water and some of the health. And he goes, this is perfect, because he said he won't listen to me, but he'll read this magazine. So just wanted to add that comment, Jerry. Exactly. Thank you, Peter. Okay, All let's right. go ahead and move to the next slide. Okay. Okay. So basically at the bottom it just said, don't lose the power of these magazines. And what the power is is the fact, you know, like I said, the fact that it's a magazine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a few minutes to kind of cover 
each of the four magazines to really give you an idea of where the best, what, what the strength is of each one, okay? So this is the Consumer Guide magazine. I guess it's backwards there, but that's okay. Um, so I made some notes for myself just to make sure that I don't miss anything, all right? So the Consumer Guide. Oh, you know what? I heard this was really funny. Last night I was watching TV with my family, you know, before getting ready to go to bed, and there was an there was a commercial on for I, I don't think it was Vistaprint, but I it was it was one of these companies that do business cards, okay? And they said something in there about a business card, and I thought of how it relates to um, the marketing materials, okay? So they actually said this, that a lot of times, actually, no, he had materials too. It was a guy that was putting materials down about his business, and he said, "Your material, the materials you choose often define your business in the eyes of others. And that you should use the best tools possible to look your best. And I was like, wow, that's like awesome because it was this last night. So I was like, that that fits perfectly here because one of the things I've tried to do is really provide something that's top notch. Okay. Um, because I I I use these in my marketing approach. That's what I do. I use my these magazines in my marketing approach because I think it's the best way for me to get information to people. Okay. So the consumer guide. Um, this is a 24-page magazine, from cover to cover, 24 pages. Okay, um, it starts with the hist by covering the history of the technology. Now, the reason that it starts that way is that I want to make sure because a lot of people aren't familiar with the technology. So I wanted to make sure that I could right off the bat establish that this is not some kind of fad technology or fad product that's been developed over the last 10 or 15 years that now they're trying to you know, um, introduced to the marketplace and make a few bucks and then dump off because it's it's not a tried or true, you know, um, uh, product. Mm. Make sure you guys are drinking a lot of water, okay? Especially if you're one of the areas that it's having like this heat wave, make sure you're drinking a lot of water. And, of course, make sure it's Kangen water. <laughs> um, so... I wanted to show that this technology is something that's been around. Now, most people, even when I did my in-depth research to, to write this article, I was actually kind of shocked at how far back it actually goes because most of us are under the impression that ionization technology is something that was kind of developed during like the 40s and 50s. Eh, absolutely incorrect. When I looked into it and really looked into it, I found that it was actually developed all the way back to the late 1700s that they started doing ionization experiments messing around with with electrified plates and water okay now again i think it's important for people to know that because also some of the people that are connected with the um one that that are uh uh connected with this ionization history um, are notable names okay so that's another thing that's important and one of the reasons that that was one of the first things i wanted to include okay um the next thing that this consumer guide addresses is the competition, okay? It covers a lot of the misinformation that's found online. Now, it's also, I, I put a notation here for myself. It's important to get this information in the hands of prospects before they are exposed to the online junk, okay? Because it's going to allow them to be prepared when they see this stuff online. The main reason you want to do it a before instead of after is it's really hard to unlearn stuff. Okay? I hope you guys understand what I mean by that. You know, so if people, if you just kind of let people go off in whatever direction they're going to go, they go online, they put in ionizers, they put in Kangen water, they put in Enagic, you guys know that a bunch of junk throws, pops up that is being put there by other ionizer companies. So you want to make sure that before they do that, You've given them some information that will inoculate them to what they're going to be exposed to. And that's exactly what you're doing. You're inoculating them to the exposure of, of all this junk that's out there that these guys put out to try to sell their machines, okay? So the Consumer Guide does a really good job of that. You know, there's also I – didn't, I didn't really cover the, the DVDs. In, in this presentation, but there's also a DVD format of this. So if you've got younger guys that are more mu multimedia – that's what you want to get in their hands. It does the exact same thing as far as the information is concerned, um, and it really establishes 
you know, the, the junk that you're going to get run into or your, your people are going to run into, okay? The next thing is it addresses many of the prospect's objections like price compare, like price, price objections, um, comparison websites, other machine features, things like that, okay? So the articles in there, they have, they have been written to address those. And like I said, go, go back, Peter. We're not quite there yet. And to inoculate people on, on that, okay? Um, there's, there's, a, there's a, actually it's an expanded article on there, um, lifestyles of, uh, lifestyle choices of the rich and famous. This is simply for credibility. That's the people that are in that. They're A-listers. They're well-known uh, actors and singers and uh, business people. Um, the reason it's in there is because we know for a fact that these people have our machines, they drink our water, and they've 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 said it in public forums. Okay, so that's what that one is for. It's for credibility purposes. So what I'm saying is, see, I'm saying each one of these so you'll know that if you need something about credibility, you know that the consumer guide is one of the things that you can utilize. Okay, <clears throat> the certifications and awards that are in the consumer guide strictly to flex our muscle. It's to say, look at us, we're awesome, check us out, okay? And then the properties of the water. Now, one of the things I want to mention is that for the properties of the water, I include that in each one of the magazines. It's one of the things that has to be, in my opinion, included in each one. I might have changed the order or the explanation slightly, but basically it is um, – it basically covers what the properties are so that no matter what – magazine you decide to utilize it will it'll always have that in there because the properties of the water are something very very important that our prospects need to be exposed to okay all right peter go ahead and go to the health and wellness magazine we'll jump on that and you know one of the other things i want everybody to know is that we're what we're going to be covering today is the stuff that i've created but it's not to say that there aren't plenty of really great resources out there and as an independent distributor it's kind of your job and responsibility to know what's out there and find out what's going to work for you. So check the other stuff that's out there. Obviously, I've got a bias to my stuff. I think my stuff is the best stuff in Enagic. And I'm sure Tony Mack probably thinks his stuff is the best stuff in Enagic. And he'd be wrong. I'm only kidding. No, Tony's stuff is great. But what I'm saying is, you know, as an independent distributor, one of the things that you have at your disposal is anything that's out there related to this business. So make sure that you know what's out there. Again, I'm covering the stuff that I've created because I want I know I know what the intention was behind these. So I want to make sure that I cover that so you guys will understand it as much as possible. Okay. Hey so Jerry, before, ahead, before we jump yeah. ahead, um, I do have a quick question. Actually, this is a question that's come from several people here. Yeah. Um, by the way, guys, I use Jerry's stuff because I know it works. It just flat out does. But Jerry, a lot of people are asking about this uh, related to um, you know. This magazine is simply created by another distributor in an adjective, so how is that reliable? So could you address maybe how they should uh, present that because that's what they're getting from some of the prospects? Absolutely. Um, what, what you can do is, yeah, you can let them know that it was, it was created by another distributor if they ask, okay? Um, one of the things that I think is extremely important is, again, that people are going to judge the source, you need to get them to get beyond judging the source and judge the content. So here's what I would recommend that they do. You give this to somebody, you give this to somebody, all you need to do is say, feel free to check into any of it for accuracy. Because I can assure everybody on here, everything in each one of my magazines has been researched and is 100% accurate. Okay? It's 100% accurate. So... If people want to check that out, let them. See, that's the one thing I don't fear that the other the other manufacturers, other uh, you know ionizer companies out there do fear. I don't fear the truth because I know what the truth is, and the truth is everything in there is correct. That's bottom line. Yeah. So what, that's that's how you can kind of do that. If you know, if they say, well, who put this together? You can say somebody who was probably more skeptical than you has now written two different books about this industry, about ionizers, and basically wanted to create some materials that would allow prospects, allow consumers to be able to get honest information so they could make an educated buying decision. 
You know, Jerry, and, and just to add to that, um, just to help you guys out, that is what Jerry just touched on is exactly the way I present it. I say, well, and remember, I've talked to you guys about storytelling is the way to sell. And I say, well, let me tell you a little story about this guy I created. it. He's probably one of the most skeptical guys. He took over seven months and actually threw the water away several months because he wouldn't drink it because he thought it was just a bunch of garbage. So he's one of the most skeptical guys I've met in this organization. And he went through and did all the research. So you're dealing with a very skeptical person that would that proved to himself that this water is worth a look. So it might be worth a look to you guys to read what he has to say. So I come at it from the skeptical, kind of just like them, Jerry. And that seems for all you guys listening, that seems to put that to bed where you can move on. Because Jerry Jerry was really skeptical from you know what he told me. So <laughs> I was probably more skeptical than any person that's been in this thing. Everybody's saying, oh, I'm, I'm the most skeptical person. No, you're not. You didn't do nearly the research I did in this. I was looking for a way to knock holes in this thing for seven, almost nine months in total. It was nine months from the date that I actually was introduced to this to the date that I got my machine. Okay? And I did real research. I didn't do this, went online for five minutes. Man, I called up people in Japan <laughs> to check out the company. Okay, that's that's different. That's not that's not what 99.9% .9 of the people that you're going to run into, they will not go to those lengths. They will not go to the lengths of getting one of their contacts who to to contact one of their good friends in the country that this place that this company is at to check them out behind the scenes. You, nobody's going to do that, but I did. Okay, so there's a big difference. Now, I saw somebody actually put a little comment, a little private thing that asked, "What's the date of the consumer guide?" I need everybody to understand. This is not consumer reports. Okay? This is not an issue of consumer reports. This is a marketing magazine called Consumer Guide that was written entirely by me from cover to cover. The information that it that it includes is all accurate information, but it's not consumer reports. So make sure that you're not making people think that, okay, that it's consumer reports. All right? Okay. Let me jump into the health and wellness magazine. Again, this is another one that uh it, it, it had very specific intention behind it, okay? Now, the intention was this. Number one, it's a 16-page magazine cover to cover. It's, the, it's health through hydration. That was the number one thing. It's to introduce and reinforce the concept, this concept or idea to new prospects. Most people don't think because I want everybody to understand something very important, okay? When it comes to the – when it comes to – the industry of health and wellness, most emphasis is not put on water. Why? Because most most water that's available doesn't make anybody money. So it's like it, the, the reality is there's not a lot of people. They, they push diet. They push exercise. They push supplementation. They push all these other things. But water, hydration, is not really one of the things they push that much. I mean, some companies like Gatorade try to push that what they have will, you know, because uh, it's got electrolytes, you know, that that's supposed to be something great for you. Um, and, again, here's something that people need to know. All an electrolyte is, and, and again, if, if you don't know what a term means, look it up, okay? Look it up so you have a clear understanding because I think what happens is we all become a lot of, of head nodders. You know, somebody says something and because we don't we're too embarrassed to admit that we don't know what it means exactly. We'll just go along and and and, and in agreement. Oh yeah, oh of course. Let me tell you what an electric light is by definition. It's a mineral that will conduct electricity within the human body. That's it. Typically the electrolytes that we are being, you know, given like in a Gatorade or something, magnesium, calcium, potassium. Those are the main electrolytes, okay, you guys? So don't let – it's a marketing term. It's been turned into a marketing term. So replenishing your electrolytes, believe it or not, you guys, the same electrolytes, are they exist in tap water that goes to our machine and then becomes Kangen water. Those same electrolytes that, that you know, Powerade and Gatorade and all those guys promote, it's the same thing. So you got to understand, it's, it's turned into a marketing term, all right? So health through hydration, to really get this idea and the concept ingrained in people's brains, that water is the way to go. And here's one that you can always use, you guys. I use this all the time. When I'm talking to people about the importance of hydration and water specifically, liquid water, I will tell them this. Look, here's the deal, okay? I don't know what you're drinking, 
But the reality is, water is water, and as soon as you do anything else to it, it becomes something entirely different. Okay, even when you make tea out of it, or you make coffee out of it, when you put when you take water and combine it with coffee grounds, it stops being water. That's why it's called coffee. If they don't, they don't call it brown water, they call it coffee. Now the reason is because it is not water anymore, and people have to understand that. And for people who don't believe that that's the case, I need you to just create the scenario in your own mind and be willing to use this with your prospects if they challenge you on this, okay? I want you to take two fish bowls, left and right. You fill one up with water. You fill one up with whatever other version of water you might be drinking, whether it be soda or tea or coffee or sports drink. You know, all of those, if you look at the first ingredient, is water, right? So you think, well, this is mostly water. Fill up that other fish tank with it. Then take two little goldfish and drop them in and see what happens. Because what's going to happen is this. Water will promote and sustain life. Whatever else is in there will promote and sustain death, period. So if you ever need to drive home the point that water and liquid are not the same thing, that's the best way to do it, okay? It's, it's a very good, very good uh, visualization. Because what you say then is, you know, on this side, you've got this fish happily swimming, swimming around, and on this one, you've got a fish that's belly up. Yeah. Okay? All right. Um, next in the Health and Wellness Magazine, that the, the, real, the concept that we want to promote here are the realities of soda. Okay? There's a couple of different articles in there, including one about a, a Dr. Oz episode that really focused in on soda and, and its... And its um, you know, the, the, its connection with an increase in the possibility of pancreatic cancer. Um, you know, can't, the, the C word is devastating for a lot of people. It's becoming more and more prevalent. So making sure that you are, are kind of, you know, addressing that is, is a good thing. And that, see, again, you're not addressing it. The magazine is, okay? Um, so the, the realities of soda is another thing that this particular magazine covers. Pregnancy. Now, let me explain why the, the, there's a two-page spread on pregnancy and alkaline water in the health and wellness magazine. The reason that I did this is I researched about pregnancy. I had a lot of people ask me about, you know, well, what's the connection with pregnancy? Can a pregnant woman drink this? Is it okay? Well, come to find out, not only is it okay, but it is more than okay. Okay. It's highly recommended. One, I found out that one of the reasons for morning sickness, okay, is that it's dehydration. That's one of the main culprits in women who are pregnant who experience morning sickness, it's because they're dehydrated. So obviously, drinking this water and hydrating yourself at a, at a, at a, at a greater level is going to bring um, a lot of uh, relief to that. I mean, morning sickness, if you've ever had morning sickness as, as a woman, and again, I have to go by what I've been told, um, it's, it's horrible, okay? But I also know that there's some women that have had, that they've had Kangen babies, okay? If you know anybody who's had one, ask them if they experienced any morning sickness. And I bet you're going to find that 100% of them didn't. Why? Because of the fact that they were hydrated to a point where the symptomatic problems that are associated with dehydration and pregnancy didn't manifest into morning sickness. Okay? So the reason that I wanted to make this two-page spread is that I think everybody would agree that when a woman is pregnant, she's probably more susceptible or in a condition that more people would, would view as like vulnerable as far as the human body is concerned than just about any other time. So, you know, when you're healthy. I mean, obviously, if you've got like cancer or some other disease, you're going to be more vulnerable. But as far as the human condition is concerned, that pregnancy, you're kind of more vulnerable because you're actually, you're, you're, you're trying to create additional life, okay? Well, if our water is good for that condition, then wouldn't it make sense that it's probably good for just about any condition that exists in the human condition? Doesn't that kind of make sense? So that's the reason that it's a two-page spread, and I wanted to put real emphasis. So it's th that article is not just for pregnant women. That article should be read by anybody who understands the human condition because that way they can go, wow, okay, I get it. I, I, this makes sense to me now, okay? If, if it's good here, it's probably good in all these other areas too, okay? The next is the diabetes, as Peter was saying. There's, a, there's an article in there now that specifically talks about the aspect of diabetes. And actually, I, I took some uh, excerpts out of the book um, by uh, 
Song Wong, it's not Sang Wang, by the way, you guys. It's Song Wong of Reverse Aging, okay? It's this, and again, it's, it's backwards, so I apologize. But he had some very specific aspects addressed in his book about the connection between diabetes, an improvement in diabetes, and alkaline water. Um, it also has some of the statistics regarding diabetes at the bottom of the page for here in the United States. That was put there to, again, emphasize how this problem is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay. Then it covers some information about energy drinks, including uh, energy drink related deaths. Okay. Now the reason that that was included is so we could actually address and focus on some of the younger generation because a lot of these kids now they're fueling themselves, and I call it fueled to fail. They're fueling themselves with these energy drinks. Okay with the monsters, the Red Bulls, the the, the five-hour energies, all of these things, these kids who should have energy anyway. Why would an 18-year-old kid need an energy drink? Think about that. Or a 15-year-old kid. Man, when I was 15, I couldn't sit still. And that was just normal. How, why do these kids need these energy drinks? They do sense. because they're full of acid, Jerry. <laughs> and what's funny is they're filling themselves with more acid. And you know, yeah, what, they're, exactly. you know what they do? They drink more energy drinks. It's like this. It's like this cycle of destruction. Okay, it's it's crazy. Um, the next one that's covered in the health and wellness is about weight loss. It's the connection between alkaline water and and again hydration in general and weight loss. And then the last thing that it covers is the properties of the water. So it kind of goes to this. It kind of goes to a um, a process of giving you information that starts with you know health through hydration and ends with the best option available to you as a consumer. And everything in between kind of leads up to that conclusion. Okay? All right, Peter, let's go ahead and go on to the next one. This is actually one of the latest magazines. It's the uh, Hardcore Health with uh, Tony Freeman. You know, this one should <laughs> – this is what's kind of funny. This is probably the most misunderstood of the magazine, the marketing magazines I've created because a lot of people think right off the bat, right off the bat, that this is intended for, for athletes. That, that the only people that you should be giving it to, to are people that look like Tony Freeman on the cover. If that's what you think, you are wrong. You are sadly mistaken. Okay? Yes, it is intended to be able to give to athletes of any level. Okay? And basically that means the people that are playing the game. But who this was really intended for are the armchair quarterbacks. Okay? The people watching the game. The people that... Gatorade will spend the kind of money they do in, in marketing and advertising to appeal to, okay? The, the Gatorade company does not expect to make all their money from, from, you know, professional athletes buying their product. What they expect to do is to pay a bunch of professional athletes to say they drink their product, which will get the people that look up to those professional athletes, it'll get those, pe those people to go out and buy the products in the millions, Okay, that's what that's why they do what they do. That's why they pay people. That's why they spend all the money on these commercials that you see. It's why they pay so much money to these, you know, to these. Did you guys did, before Tiger Woods like had his little uh, problem? Did you know that Gatorade made a deal with Tiger Woods that Tiger Woods was going to be paid one hundred million dollars? I almost feel like I should say it like this to basically create four different Gatorades that were Tiger Gatorades. A hundred million dollars. <throat> Do you think that was because they thought that Phil Nicholson was going to buy a hundred million dollars worth of Gatorade if Tiger said that he drinks it? No. Because all those people that are the Tiger fans, they expected them when Tiger says, I like Gatorade, that those all those people would say, I, then I like Gatorade too, okay? So what this magazine does is it creates an endorsement of sorts. It's not a direct endorsement, but it's what these – these are all professional athletes or professionals <clears throat> in the athletic world. And, by the, you know, by the way too, Jerry, just to add to that, guys, because I told you I play college baseball and I coached a lot of guys over the years. I know a lot of guys in Major League Baseball. None of them drink Gatorade, none of them. They will not touch that stuff, so – just so you're aware, what Jerry's saying is absolutely true. 
So, again, what this magazine was really for, again, everybody in it is either a professional athlete or somehow connected to, uh, you know, the, the professional health and wellness industry, like on a very high end level when it comes to uh, being connected with athletes and athletics. So, really, what this is for is credibility of our water. It creates a credible source to show, and diversity too, boxers, runners, um, you know, models, uh, um, the f professional football players, professional baseball players, you know, some of the retired greats in, in, in some of these sports that are, that are drinking our water specifically. See, that's the other thing you have to make sure that you do understand when you're promoting with these. These people are not just drinking alkaline water. They're drinking Kangen water produced by an Enagic machine. And everybody in this magazine owns an Enagic machine, okay? And the last thing, of course, is the properties of the water. Again, it's really important to emphasize the importance of the properties of the water when it comes to understanding what the difference is. Because that's really one of the biggest differences when it comes to the Kangen water and any other water out there, okay, or any other beverage that's out there. It's those three main properties that create what I call the trifecta of improved health, all right? You guys know what they are, right? Negative ORP alkalinity, microclustering, okay? If you don't know those, you need to learn them, okay? All right, let's go ahead and go to the Eco Living. This is the last of the four marketing magazines. This is the latest one that I did. Um, I'm really happy with this one too. The uh, A lot of people, and again, don't judge this book by its cover, okay? The main use for this is not to give to a tree hugger. It's not to give to somebody who, uh, you know, is, is chaining themselves to a giant oak so it doesn't get shut, cut down. It's not somebody who's singing Kumbaya down by the river. That's not what this is for. Let me explain what the intention was. First off, it's to draw attention to and, and inform people about bottled water. The bottled water, I think everybody would agree. Most people are drinking one of two things when it comes to water, either bottled water or tap. And the majority of people drink bottled water because they're under the misinterpretation that it is healthier for them somehow or it's better for them. Or maybe even it's, it's the convenience aspect, you know, grab and go type of thing. What, that's one of the things that I wanted to really be able to emphasize to people is say bottled water should not be an option. You should, When you look at bottled water, you should be saying for a lot of different reasons – this should not be an option for me personally. Now, obviously, one of the easiest ways to <clears throat> garner a person's attention with this is to point out the very obvious environmental impact when it comes to bottled water. That's probably one of the easiest, which is the reason that that's the direction I started with with this one. That's why it's in eco-living. I think everybody's aware of environmental um, you know, uh, issues and, and stuff. But it's uh, – I'm just getting myself some more water, guys. Sorry. I don't want to spill it all over the place. Um, but it's – a lot of people use it, okay? So the, the aspect of in the environment. So they're familiar with that. So that's that's one of the first ways that I addressed the concern of the bottled waters is, is through the environmental impact. But then it goes on to actually have some other – you know, some other directions that we talk about, okay? So right off the bat, bottled water issues environmental, and even health, okay? Next in the magazine, it addresses some aspects of pesticides. There, there's, a, there's a group called the EWG. It's the Environmental Working Group. And each year, they create the EWG's Dirty Dozen. Basically, what that is, it is, if you guys can see that, um, it is a list of the top 12 fruits and vegetables with the highest concentrations of pesticides when they test them. In some cases, there's like, 15, was that what the, I want, to, I want to make sure I say this right. Um, a single grape sample contained 15 different pesticides. Single samples of celery, cherry tomatoes, imported snap peas, and strawberries showed 13 different pesticides each. So it talks about the aspects of pesticides. It talks about it in an environmental aspect, but it's a pre, it, it basically was put there so that we can come full circle later on in the magazine and talk about the 11.5, how we can strip those pesticides off of those veg fruits and vegetables so they can become less of an issue for people. So there was a reason to put that in there, maybe a little sneaky reason, because I wanted to be able to give our 11.5 a platform later on that you could, you could reference back to that, but that's why it's there, okay? 
The Property Brothers. You know, you, you guys know the show, The Property Brothers. It's on the the um, home. It's not the home shopping network. <laughs> it's HGTV. Yes, it's H- uh, yeah, HGTV. Home and Garden Television. Okay. Well, the Property Brothers are these twins that they help people find the house of their dream, and then they those people can't afford the house of their dream, so they buy a cheaper version, and then they make it the house of their dream. Well, on one of the episodes, and I guess there's actually been more than one episode, but on one of the episodes. One of the people who are buying the house, they have an SD501, and they are insistent that it, it be put into their new gourmet kitchen. And so there are screenshots from the actual episode that has one of the property brothers holding the machine and them talking and, you know, what they did with them. So it's it really is pretty amazing that that we got the opportunity to have that that show feature this. So that's in there for credibility purposes because a lot of people are familiar with the show. Okay, so that's what that one is in there for. The 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 next one is the cost compare. There's a cost comparison that actually shows our water compared to I think tap. I don't know if it's tap. I don't think it is. No, our water compared to if you were drinking our water for 15 years, kind of what the cost would be. Okay, our water compared to Dasani, compared to Fiji, and then compared to real water. Real water is one of these alkaline waters, alkaline waters that are in a bottle. So it covers that and talks about the actual expense, like financial expense, but it also covers environmental aspect and even health aspect when it comes to about the positive ORP and the effect that it has on the body, okay? So that's the, the piece there with the cost. It, it talks about costs financially, physically, and um, environmentally, okay? Now, the next two are the pieces that are really they, – they're hard to put anyplace else because, they, I mean – they have a really strong environmental aspect, which is the reason I put them in this, okay? It's the 2.5 water and the 11.5 water. So the 2.5 is to show that you can actually kill germs without harmful chemicals. And I mean chemicals like bleach and stuff, stuff that if you drank won't kill you, okay? That to me is, is something that's a non-harm, you know, that, that harmful chemicals are if you drink them, you will die or, or, or wish you were dead, Okay. So the 2.5, we wanted to show that, you know, to protect the environment. Because I want you guys to think about this. Do you know how much junk is put down the drains that wind up back in our water supply? Just think about that. Just on the on the on a basic chemical, how much how much shampoo do you think goes down the drain each day in the United States of America? I'm going to imagine it's probably quite a bit. Okay. That's just one thing. When you think of all the washing machines, all of the, you know, car fixing your cars, all that kind of stuff, it's tons and tons and tons. So if we can, and then what about harmful chemicals? How much bleach do you think goes down the drain? How much, you know, uh, how much ammonia do you think goes down the drain? If we can start kill, cutting out some of these harmful chemicals, it's going to help us in the future. Okay? I think that makes sense. So that's the reason that was included. And then, of course, 11.5 water for cleaning and degreasing, including cleaning your fruits and vegetables. And again, this is how we can come full circle back to that EWG article that now a person connects them together. And they go, wow, you know, that means I can take my, my, my really, you know, delicious strawberries and I can clean them off of all these pesticides that, that all the pesticides residue that's on there. And I can eat something that at least those toxins that <clears> – <throat> Those things that were put on the fruit or vegetable to keep other animals away from them and make it so they won't eat them, I it's okay for me to eat them. Eh, that doesn't make sense in itself, okay? So keep that in mind, all right? And then, of course, the last one is the properties of the water. Always close with the properties of the water because of how important that is, okay? All right, so, Peter, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Okay, so Jerry, magazine. just one thing One thing to add, guys. I just wanted to let you know, when, when Jerry showed this magazine to me, because one of the things I always do is let the people play with the different waters, not just drink it. And the 11.5 is very, very critical as far as pesticide removal. So when I saw that information about the pesticides on there, I went, this is the missing link that we didn't – that I – I didn't have. So now when I give them their gallon of 11 and a half to play with after the demo, I give them this magazine, which is perfect because they can read about the pesticides that are cancer causing. So it's a really good backup. So Jerry, thank you for that because that was one of the pieces where 
I could tell them, but now they can actually read about it in a magazine format, which is very cool. You know what, Peter? Before we go from this, you know what? I want to do a quick poll. Um, it's it's. I'll go ahead and do it because I've already got it now, Peter. So I'll take care of it. Okay. So I'm just going to start the poll. Here's what the poll is, you guys. Which magazine has worked best for you? Okay. And if you haven't been able to use all of them, but you used a couple of them, let me know which one works best for you. So go ahead and I, I just popped the poll up. I don't know how you see it. If you see it like I do, it's in the bottom right. Um, click the one that makes the most sense for you. <clears throat> and then um, in, I'm going to give it like 30 seconds. So if you can click the one that, again, has worked the best for you. I want to get an idea from you guys because I can speculate on what I think works the best. But you guys know what's worked best for you for the people that have utilized these. And for the people who haven't, I want to give them an idea of what you guys think are working the best out there in the field. So, again, if you can just go ahead and click on the one that you feel has worked the best for you, and I'm going to end the poll in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, so it appears yeah, the, the majority of guide there, people, 40% say the consumer guide, 33% say the uh, health and wellness and I can't see the very bottom of it, so I'm going to see. hardcore health and 27% equal living. So um, you got okay. uh, hardcore health really is one maybe they just don't understand quite as well. But the other three obviously or maybe they, they just haven't used as much because again, right. I mean, a lot of people's perception is that it's just for these like bodybuilders or for these extreme athletes or for these super athletes. And I think once you can get beyond that, you understand it's more for just establishing the credibility of our water within the mind of a sports fan, you'll learn how to use it better and learn how to use it different. But, okay, well, thank you very much, you guys. I appreciate you taking that that uh, that quick poll. I do appreciate that. So go ahead, Peter, let's go to the next slide. Okay, I'm going to talk real quickly about um, the targeted brochures, okay? Go ahead and go to the next one, Peter. Targeted brochure, which you have to understand is that there's really two different types of target markets. The first one is going to be commercial, all right? And the reality is, though, for commercial markets, you need to know what you're doing, okay? You cannot be a novice. <clears throat> if you're going to tra take on a commercial, uh, you know, commercial type market, you need to know your stuff. But some of the ones that you can approach are things like restaurants, spas, gyms and health clubs, places that the integration of the water really makes sense right off the bat, okay? Now, the consumers... What you need there are, you just need to know the, the, the right tools if you're going for target market. So consumers are more special interest, all right? Could, let's go ahead, Peter. Okay, so today we're going to talk about the, the consumers, all right? So basically, when it comes to talking to people about the water, you want to have a very, uh, initially, probably generic approach. Why? Because you have a generic education and understanding and knowledge of the of the water usually very superficial and I don't mean superficial like like you know like Paris Hilton I mean it like you just you, you don't you don't know that much so it's kind of like you've only scratched the surface okay so you want to begin with generalities the aspects that apply to just about anybody okay that's those the properties of the water the health through hydration the generalities understanding the water basics the uses um, and and the benefits basics but then you want to, you can address some of the so-called special interests that really aren't special interests. They're special interests that are shared by everybody. Okay, um, things like the weight loss, the general health stuff. Everybody wants to. You know, I don't care who you are. Okay, you could be Ally McBeal. If you asked her, hey, would you like to uh, lose some weight? She's gonna say yes. Okay, that's just the way people are. We all want to lose a little bit of weight. I didn't. No matter how skinny you are, okay. So weight loss is something that ap applies to just about anybody. All right. Same thing with general health. For the most part, if you ask somebody, even if you're in great health, would you like to feel better? I, I can't think of many people that are going to say no. no. I don't want to feel any better. I, I'm, I'm as good as I want to be. No, everybody wants to feel better. Okay. Now, one of the things you have to understand is, as you learn, your abilities are going to evolve because your knowledge has evolved. Okay. So once you hit like 3A, 4A, 5A, and above. You will be in a position to to a couple things. One, your knowledge will have evolved, but so will your personal credibility because what you've kind of done is proven the model of success through you. So 
this is when you hit that 3A, 4A, 5A. This is when the people around you are going to start taking you more seriously. Okay, those people that may have been naysayers from the beginning, they're gonna they're gonna really start listening a, a lot more. Okay, go ahead. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so what you want to do if you're gonna try going after a very targeted market, you want to address what I call the hot buttons. Okay, yeah, a hot button is simply the thing that a person that 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 a person is influenced by, okay? <clears throat> it speaks to somebody. So you want to concentrate on the special interest that many people share. That's like what I'm saying, okay? I've basically created brochures that cover five different aspects. One is extreme sports and athletics. This one is great for anybody, and I recommend that you have some of these with you at all times. Why? Because I can promise you this, because it's believe it or not, it's happened to me. It has happened to me personally, and I wrote these, man. I usually have them in my vehicle. I have a box in my trunk that has a couple of each one of the magazines. It's got some of the brochures. It's got all the different stuff at my disposal in case I ever need it. And there's been times where I've been like at the grocery store, and a guy walks next to me, and I'm just like, oh, my God, I need to give this guy something. I This dude I need to strike up a conversation with and just say, hey, you know what? You should You should check this out. And I go to the car, and I realize that I, for whatever reason, I maybe I put something in the trunk that I had to move stuff. My stuff wasn't there, and I was devastated <laughs> because I wanted that. I because I wanted that to be the credibility for me. I didn't want to have to rely on me to be the credible source. I wanted that to be the credible source. Why? Because who's more credible, me or him? Who is more credible? Seriously. No, he is. And the guy I wanted to talk to was this big bodybuilder, man. I was like, dang it. It was upsetting to me. And guess what, guys? We all go through the same thing. <laughs> so what I recommend is like to have some of these things for the people that are athletic. You see them all the time. You see them all the time. You see them coming in from workouts. They run into a store to grab a bottle of water or something, you know, and they're sweating. And, and you know they either came from a run or they just came from the gym. Have some of these things, okay? The, this one, the hardcore hydration, great for that, okay, having those. Then you've got, oh, for beauty application. You know anybody who wants to be beautiful? Anybody? You know anybody who's getting older and they're not grow, growing old gracefully and they wish they could? This one tells them how they can be beautiful inside and out, okay? Cooking in household. You know anybody who cooks? How about this one? Okay, again, this is a little introduction for you. You just slip this to somebody. Hey, you know what? I know you like to cook. I know you like to eat. I know you like to whatever. You know, here, some basic information for you. Again, you've got the environmental, and then you've got the weight loss, the feeling trapped. Okay, so that gives you five different avenues that may seem like it's very specific. It's not, though. It is generalized because pretty much all of those things, except for maybe the athletics, apply to just about everybody. Okay? Peter, let's go ahead and go to the next one. I think this is just the splash page of the of the brochure so everybody can see what they look like. But again, you, so you've got your beauty, your extreme sports, the, the cooking, weight loss, and environmental. I recommend having some of these with you so that you're ready for whatever applicant. Because let me tell you the, the reality. Like Tony Mac, Tony Mac makes some great brochures. Stan has some great brochures too, but most of those are, they're more generalized. They're more like broad scope, which is great. But I think everybody would, would agree, or at least a lot of people would agree, that if you want to talk to somebody, talk to them in a language that they're familiar with or that they understand. So if I have somebody that only speaks Spanish and I start trying to speak to them in German, I might be able to convey through a hand signal or whatever what I'm trying to say, and they might kind of understand it, but it would make a lot more sense for me to speak to them in Spanish. So if you have somebody who loves to cook, then don't give them the environmental one. <laughs> give them the one for cooking. If you have somebody who is really into the beauty aspect, the skin creams and the hair and everything, you know that. Don't give them the hardcore hydration. Don't give them the one for athletes. Give them the one for beauty. So speak the language that your prospects want, that, that they understand, okay? And that's one of the things that you have to identify which one, what, what language that is, okay? But these are really good. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide, Peter. A 
because here's what I want everybody to understand. When it comes to our marketing efforts, the ultimate goal of our marketing efforts is to go beyond just a sale. You have to remember, well, like I said at the beginning, we're trying to do more than just get a sale, okay? We're trying to get a sale. We're trying to establish a distributor. We're trying to create more product sales down the road. And the way that you do that is not, not by trying to make a sale, but it's to find the glue, okay? And the glue to me is the thing that sticks a person to this, okay? We need to capture their interest because if you capture their interest, then people are more prone to, to really – become solidified to this and the likelihood of them becoming a distributor, making some product sales down the road, it becomes much, much greater. You have to remember that the reality is people want to know what's in it for them, okay? They want to know how does this affect me, how does this benefit me, and bottom line is what is in this for me. I don't care how nice a person is, how, you know, how, how compassionate they are. At the end of the day, when it comes to something like this, people want to know how does this affect me in a positive way. So you need to make sure that you do understand that when it comes to your efforts. Let's go ahead and go to the next slide, Peter. Here's another thing you need to understand about people, okay? When it comes to interest, when it comes to sale, when it comes to decision-making, 10% of interest is logical. Okay, that's all 10%. That's why when I, when, you ha when I have these people that are like, well, I need to know exactly how this works. I'm like, really, why? Why do you need to know exactly how this works? Well, you can't drink water? I mean, seriously, um, when people say that to me, and this is going to be a little tip again for you people out there that, you know, say that, uh, say you have somebody who comes to you and says, well, I, I need to know how this thing works before I'd be willing to drink the water. My response to a person like that is, do you know how your cell phone works? I mean, do you actually know how it works? Do you know how it creates pretend buttons that you push and somehow these magical rays go through the air and hit a tower and then bounce off another one and go down to another tower that then goes to another piece of equipment that makes pretend buttons come up that a person can push and then you two are talking to each other? Do you know how that works? Or is it more important that it does? I think it's more important that it does. And that's a, I, I've used that with people and it disarms them very quickly. Because when you put it in that context and it's like, well, maybe it's not, maybe it's not so important that, that I really understand, you know, how it works. You know, that maybe it's not that important. OK, so what you want to do is really tap into the more emotional aspect because 10 percent of interest is logic. Ninety percent of interest is emotional. OK, and also buying when it comes to buying 10 percent logic, 90 percent emotional. Listen to what a person says. I love to go for a run. I hate what's happening to the environment. I love cooking delicious food. I hate that I'm looking so much older. Listen to those keywords of emotion and then respond accordingly by providing them information that basically addresses what they're saying. Okay, let's go to the next one. Obviously, you want to show how it pertains to them, capture their interest, strengthen their bond or connection to not only the water and the product, but then also the business. And by, by really talking to somebody in the language that they speak, that's the best way to accomplish that. Okay, let's go to the next one, Peter. Targeted exposure, it does equal interest, and it's going, to, it's going to solidify their interest to the project and to the water, and that increases the likelihood of them being successful, okay? And here's something else I wanted to address, because I think this is an actual very important thing. So when it comes to doing business, you have to ask yourself, are, are, do you have a hobby or do you really have a business, okay? Now, let's take a look at, at each of them. Go ahead, Peter. Let's go to the next one. A hobbyist is somebody that waits for opportunity to show up, okay? They wait for opportunity to, to expose itself. Somebody who has a business, they make opportunity, all right? Peter, let's go to the next one. I'll kind of explain what I mean here. So a person who's a hobbyist, they will sometimes learn, you know, if they have to. You know, they'll, they'll occasionally go to a, a demo or a training or something like this webinar if, if it's convenient for them. 
you know, they'll keep a few tools on hand, um, you know, in case the opportunity arises to give something away. Okay? Now, here's the difference between that and somebody who's in business. When you're in business, you learn as much as possible, as quickly as possible. You attend every opportunity that is there, demos, trainings. You want to get to everyone. And you have you make sure you have a lot of tools and resources, and you create opportunity by being prepared and making it happen. It's like that day that I didn't have that for that, that bodybuilder, man. I was so mad at myself. Why? Because I typically – because that day – I wasn't thinking business. I didn't make sure that that materials was in my trunk, man, and it frustrated me. Why? I was ready to make opportunity happen. I was ready to do it, but it didn't. So don't find yourself in that same position. Now, here's one of the, here's an example of what what can happen if you're thinking business. Okay, go ahead, Peter. So here's an example, me personally. Okay. So when I go to my bank, I deposit checks all the time. They see me, they see my wife. They, we, I, I know everybody at the bank on a first aid basis, and I'm constantly dripping on every teller I speak to. Okay, I, I know these people, but I'm not too pushy. I'm always listening. I'm always. I, I try to be informative. And, and why? I know my stuff, guys. That's one of the reasons I can. So go ahead, Peter. Let's go to the next one. On one of the occasions that I went to the bank, I was talking, and finally, one of the tellers I was talking to said. I'd like to try some of that water from one teller. So I brought water in, and then you know what happened, you guys? Let's go ahead, Peter. I ended up sampling the entire bank staff, everybody, and their friends, and their families, and even a couple of their pets. <clears throat> I was also asked if I wanted to be the featured business of the month. I said, sure. I don't know what that means, but okay. Well, this is what it means. I was able to actually set up a booth at my bank with my information on there and every person who walked into that branch was able to be they were exposed to my stuff go ahead Peter let's go to the next one that's a look from the outside of the bank this is a look from the inside of the bank go ahead and go to the next one this is the actual table so I had my magazines up there I had my brochures I created those those two signs there I had my business cards I made sure that it was replenished so one of the things that I want everybody to understand is if you want to be able to seize opportunity, you need to be able to have this type of stuff at your disposal. Because the worst thing that can happen is opportunity avails itself, and then you don't have what you need at your disposal. Because the reality is a lot of times these things are not available right in your hand. That you, You're going to need to order something, and it's going to take some time to get to you, and that window of opportunity might shut before you have the opportunity to take advantage of it. Okay, So I was able to take advantage. Literally, they, they said to me one day, would you like to be? And the next day, I had my table in there and that set up the next day, okay? Because I'm not going to wait. They might change their mind. I don't want that to happen, okay? Go ahead, Peter. Let's go to the next one. The last the last two items that I'm going to cover real quick, and this one might not make much sense to you when it comes to marketing efforts, but believe it or not, some of the books and, and booklets and stuff can actually be utilized for marketing efforts. Peter, go ahead. So the two that I'm talking about here are these two, Ride the Wave and Paddling Out. Now, the, re the way that you can use these for marketing efforts is when you're talking to a person, if you're talking to them about the aspect of the business, one of the things that you want to make sure that they understand is that a model has been created to help them, okay? One of the biggest fears that most people who are do, do, do this business or get into this business have is they're afraid they won't know what to do, and they're afraid that there won't be the type of tools necessary to help them learn what to do. So if you can off the bat let them know that, this, that a book like this exists, that Ride the Wave, 241 pages of information that will really help them understand how this, this whole thing works, and that this, the Paddling Out, which is 80 pages of information and tips and hints of how to become successful in this, that those things exist, it will let them know that if should they decide to pursue the aspect of the distributorship, that there are tools in place ready to help them immediately. Now, they're not going to have to figure this out. They're not going to have to reinvent the wheel to figure out how to be successful. That information is already there, okay? So that's one of the things that I really want to make sure that everybody understands is if you if you show – see, <laughs> you also use this as kind of a – as a lure. So you let a person know that something like this exists. You also let them know that should they decide to purchase their machine and become a distributor, that you have a copy of this for them as a gift to, to celebrate their new distributorship. It's kind of a lead-in. 
And it's not that much, you guys. I mean, it's like, I understand the cover price on this is like, I don't even know what it is. Nineteen ninety-five is what the cover price is. Again, perceived value. Okay, it's to establish value in the in the mind of the reader. But just offering something like this can be the difference between a person moving forward and not moving forward. It's really weird the way people are. Okay, so that's how that's how you use that as in in a marketing type scenario. Okay, Peter, go ahead and go to the next slide. I'm not even sure where I'm at. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do on my end, you guys. Um, actually, let me put, uh, Peter, I'm going to remove this sticky. I'm going to put this other sticky. I don't know if I have this sticky. Okay, there it is. All right. So right now I've just popped up a, uh, in the, uh, chat, there is a link to the big sale that I've got going on. It actually ends on Tuesday. Um, what I'm going to do for you guys, and actually I've kind of changed this for the next 24 hours. I'm going to, I think I'm going to make it to, you know, the, well, wait, it's till midnight tomorrow. Um, anybody who places an order for materials, they're going to get a copy of free mindful marketing ebook that I've created. Um, it's, it's like 22 pages. It covers a lot of this information, but it's at your disposal to reread it. And, and, and actually the, the ebook goes in a little bit deeper in some of them. Um, any material order that happens today, everybody's going to get, you're going to get a free copy of Paddling Out, whatever you end up ordering. Um, also, any order over 50 bucks is going to get some bonus materials. Basically, what I've done is I've tried to make it about $20 worth of extra materials um, that you didn't order. So if you order a couple of the health and wellness magazines and some of the consumer guides, um, and you know, then I'll throw in a couple of extra, you know, maybe the, the hardcore health um, and, and, a, and one of the DVDs or something, okay? Um, again, I'm try, I try to mix it up. If you order a bunch of everything or you order everything, I'll just give you more of something that, that it seemed like you liked, okay? Um, and then there's also free shipping on orders of $150 or more. Uh, that's for the U.S. only, though, unfortunately. Um, I did want to give a little bit of a tip to our people out of the country, because I know there's a lot of people in from the out of the country right now. So what I wanted to let you guys know is if you're out of the country, unfortunately, the shipping rates are what they are. I, I don't have any control over that, okay? But because I know for some of the people, I mean, I've, I've had a couple of people from out of country that the shipping was more than their order. So they ordered like $110 worth of stuff, and the shipping was 120 And I know that that, and unfortunately, because going out of country – it is it's expensive so <clears throat> here's what I'm gonna recommend if you're out of the country and you want to place an order coordinate with a couple of your other distributors and place one big order in conjunction with one another and split the cost and that way you're gonna be able to split the uh, uh, you'll split the cost of the uh, shipping as well because um, one bigger order it seems that that's you know because like the minimum just me shipping a, a flat rate envelope is like twenty four dollars and that's not my that's that's the that is the post office okay so um, that's probably going to be the best bet that I can I can give to people when it comes to that so uh, Peter go ahead and go to the next one okay so this is pretty much the last slide but I what I wanted to do is see if there was any specific um, uh, any specific questions about using these type of marketing materials, marketing questions in general? If you want to pop them in there, uh, Peter will go ahead and let me know. Yeah, so uh, what, we'll, what we'll do um, here, you guys, is you, a lot of you know the drill. Some of you are new. Just type your questions into the chat box. I realize, guys, it's 620. It's a few minutes past what we normally go, but I hope – you stayed on a lot of you did you know got 95 98 percent of the people that are still here because you're learning a lot from Jerry just as I always do so while you're typing in just go in your chat type your questions in there and I also just so you know guys I put a uh, check it out button which is is you can use the link or you can just click on the check it out button and it'll take you right over to Jerry's birthday special um, while you guys are typing in your questions and things as we go, Jerry, I want to personally thank you for spending the time here with us and really uh, imparting a lot of your knowledge. You know, guys, I will tell you, um, you know, I've read Jerry's, uh, you know, book Ride the Wave. I love his book Paddling Out. 
But most of all, Jerry, I love your magazines. And, and, and I've told you this before, but guys, one of the things that I love about Jerry's magazines is I've talked to you guys a lot about we're selling a high ticket item. And it's a $4,000 machine. It's a relationship sale. You have to build a value for this. This is why I let them drink, with, let them play with the 11 and a half and the two and a half. But what I love about the magazines and what Jerry's done is people don't have time to read a tome. They'll, they may read an article, but there's a lot of really good pictures. The thing, all his magazines have really great scannability. And what that means is they can just flip through like they would a normal magazine, and they can look at the pictures, and the pictures tell a story as well. And they really inform and educate, and, and that's what I love about those, Jerry, is the fact that it can, in very in a 30-second window or less, it can tell a particular story uh, to a, a prospect. And like Jerry said, the prospects, like I've talked about, they have their inner dialogue, their core desires, their emotional connection. So they're going to flip through the thing and cue in on what matters to them, and then they'll look at the picture, they'll look at the headlines, they'll scan it, and then they'll read the article. But what Jerry's done with these magazines is he's given us the ability for us to do that for our prospects. And a lot of times, Jerry, you know, when I go back and talk to people when I deliver water the next time, We'll have a conversation about an article they read in the magazine and how impressed they were. So you're doing a great job. I really appreciate it. And I know um, Michelle was on here. She says she uses your consumer guide. Her and her team, um, they have, they've uh, had a ton of sales because of that, um, just because that, you know, flat out works. So, all right, we're going to go into some of the questions now for you here, Jerry. I'll read them off. You can go ahead and answer them. The okay. first one here is from Debbie Miller. She has a question. She says, does any of the magazines cover the solution uh, in making the two and a half, eleven and a half, someone had stated the solution is used to uh, to cut the water. Do you, do you understand what she's talking about? I, I understand what she's saying. Actually, okay. the, the thing that the thing that covers the 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 uh, enhancer solution is the um, consumer guide uh, DVD. That's the one that really kind of uh, it it because it's used as a scare tactic, and so um, this consumer guide DVD is the one that really covers that. Uh, I. I a lot of times I don't want to address things that are, you know, like that because it, it, it actually cr it, it creates more issues than solutions, okay, because people don't really understand what it is. It is kind of important that you as a distributor, you, you are going to un – that you understand the solution itself, okay, and that you understand that all it is is saline, a saline solution. It is purified water with a little bit of salt, that, like table salt. And it's got it's got a little bit of the chlorine that they use for disinfecting of the water in there as a food. It's basically to keep anything from growing in that because it's just in a bottle. Um, also, it's important to just let people know that when that stuff is used, it's not used for waters that are intended for consumption. They're for cleaning purposes. Period. You know, I, I saw another question. I want I, I want to jump on it real quick because I did sure. see that um, somebody asked, "Are these Enagic compliant?" Um, the easy answer is it doesn't have the Enagic compliance symbol on it, but for a reason. Um, the These are magazines that are information. Um, and basically, Enagic had, had kind of informed me off the bat. When I wrote Ride the Wave, I was basically told that after the, the first edition of Ride the Wave, I submitted the entire thing to Enagic for the compliance department to look it over. They did. They, they, they recommended a couple of changes, which I did, gave it back to them, gave it back to them, gave it back to them. At the end of the day, they wrote me back after about a month of having this stuff that said, um, oh, you know what, we can't, we can't approve this or disprove it. This is, a, this is for informational purposes. On, on, or, or just, they, they said they, it wasn't one of those things that could be under compliance. And so I said, okay. So what I've done is the magazines are more – in line with what a regular magazine would be, you know, um, it's information. And so the brochures, because these are specifically for marketing purposes, they have been generalized to just talk about alkaline water and acidic water, not specific to Enagic, to make sure that there wouldn't be any compliance issues there. But for me, compliance is about information. It's about making sure that the information that I'm putting out would not go against any of the standards or um, you know policies that an adjunct has in place, and I have not done that. That I, I I mean I have made sure that they stay within those parameters to make sure that I do not put myself 
any other distributor or the company at risk by information that I am putting out there. Okay. I don't know if there's any other questions that we want to address. Yeah, there, there's a couple couple other ones here, Jerry. Uh, okay. One of them was uh, that somebody wanted you to, or actually more than a couple people, a few people wanted you to repeat the deadline for the offer. How long is that going on? Okay, so the the offer for you guys with the extra stuff is the next 24 hours. Okay, so as it relates to people who might watch the replay, um, do you have a different offer for them, or is it um, is the offer well, on? Or? Yeah. Here's what the different offer is going to be. You should have been here for the live one because okay. <laughs> uh, the, the people that – I mean, I'll, I'll probably have some type of offer for them, but for the people that are here today, the way that I'm going to – you know, giving this extra paddling out for free, um, that's not going to be extended to the people who aren't doing it within the next 24 hours. Okay, and just, guys, here's the thing too because I always want people to be on these things live so you can ask questions and interact with us. You're going to get another bonus besides paddling out. I'm going to be sending out everybody who listened to this and stayed on is going to get the uh, the free podcast I did about the four-day sales conversion uh, system that I used at the end. And this, this uh, is really good. I teach people how to tell certain types of stories at the end to help your sales conversion, you'll get that podcast to you. It's an MP3. Uh, and it kind of relates to, Jerry, to what Je uh, Orica was wanting to know. She she asked, she says, you have a protocol to give the brochure with water distribution every week. Can you p please tell us this one more time? She says, I love your publication. I use all of them. Thank you. So do you have a way maybe they can share these in, in a sequence? Yeah, actually, um, you know, it's about – see, you – as a distributor, you have to understand that you actually have the control of how your prospects are given information. And one of the things that you want to do is is maintain that control. That's why don't just send people to the Internet to find out more, okay? Because you're sending Daniel into the lion's den with a stake around his neck. So don't you don't want to do that. What you want to do is control the information and kind of realize the way a person is going to be introduced to stuff that, you know, what, what is the likelihood of the stuff they're going to run into first? I like to start off typically with just a basic brochure because I think a lot of times people are hitting people with a 55-gallon drum of information when all they need is a shot glass. Okay, So don't try to overwhelm somebody. You know, The last thing you want to do is, is get all these materials and then make a package of everything and then hand it to a person and be like, here, I've covered all my bases. You do not want to do that because you're going to overwhelm the person and they're going to be like, what is all this? You want to do it slowly, okay? Slow introduction to the information, but not so slow to where it, it, it stifles you, okay? So maybe start out with just a basic brochure that addresses maybe their, their specific interest, one of the target market ones. And then based on what they're saying to you or kind of how they're reacting, it'll you want to have one of the magazines, whether it be, you know, the Eco Living or the, um, you know, the, the Health Through Hydration. Health Through Hydration probably, or the Health and Wellness, it's probably going to be one of the best ones because, again, it addresses some of the stuff with the, the, the importance of getting healthy through the help of hydration. It covers stuff like the, there, there are some bottled water articles in that. There's some stuff about the soda in that. So it's really talking about the habits that people kind of already have and what they need to do to kind of overcome that. So that's what I would, you know, um, obviously every, every situation is different. But there should be a, a somewhat systematical approach of how you – systematic approach of how you, like, you know, present them with information so that it tells a story. Because, again, you're a storyteller, and the information yeah. you give them is part of that story. So make sure that you're telling the story the way that you want them to, to hear it, okay? Because most people are not familiar with alkalinity or, or alkaline water or any of this stuff. So what you provide to them is, is the foundation of their knowledge, OK, and make sure that you're the one providing that foundation, because, again, if you allow like the Internet and all the junk that's on there from all the competition to be that person's foundation, you're going to try you're going you're to have to try to un, have them unlearn stuff. And that's extremely difficult to do. Unlearning is very difficult to do, you guys. Well, th Jerry, that's a great, uh, great answer to the question. And um, I know we're sitting here at 630. Uh, we have a, actually Robin said she ordered her copies uh, to come up to Canada. Thank you, Robin, for that. Appreciate it. A lot of thank yous, Jerry. For all you guys that are listening out there, we do run this. It's a free webinar every other Sunday night. You are on the email list. Uh, these are absolutely free of charge. Uh, I will be having Jerry back again. Jerry, Jerry and I do some live 
stuff, and we also do uh, stuff together. But I'm going to have him back again and talking about a different uh, uh, piece of content he can share with you because I know Jerry, you got a ton of thank yous, uh, you know, from all over the world, uh, which is really really nice. Um, you always, you know, bring a great uh, a great webinar, great educational information t uh, to this project. Once again, guys, uh, write down on the admin notice up there the link that Jerry gave you, or you can also, I put in a check it out button. You can click on that button. It'll take you right over to Jerry's uh, special birthday sale for you guys who are on here live. And I guess you're offering the free paddle out. And for all of you that were on the webinar, you also get the, the, uh, the, the four yeah. step and when I use and, stories and, like Jerry was talking about for closing Peter, I'm sorry but I just want yes. to let, let everybody know there's no special code or anything that you need it's it's the people that are on here know and they and, and I know so that's you don't need any special uh, code or anything it's just going to end up happening um, and also uh, Joe Grow actually asked a question about can can uh, they put put uh, like pictures of the covers of the magazines on their Facebook accounts to try to promote them to their distributors the answer is absolutely Absolutely. If you guys want to do that to, to promote them so they know what they look like and, and give them an idea of what to go look for, then absolutely. And then I guess one last thing, uh, and Jerry, I'll take care of this offline. Tanya, you ask about she placed an order. She wanted to know she has a uh, trade show coming up on Wednesday. She wanted to know if she could get them by Tuesday, but I don't know if that's possible. But you could you could deal with that with her. Unfortunately, I'll, I'll deal with it right now. No, I, unless, okay. you're, unless you're local and we can meet tomorrow, it, yeah. there's, there's no really way. Tight. Yeah. I'm really sorry. All right, guys, we got to wrap it up. I know it's late out, well, wherever you are in the world, at the East Coast, especially here in the United States of America. But thank you again, Jerry, for being on. And, guys, thank you for listening in. Know that uh, we have these every other week. The next one will be coming up two weeks from now, so that's the 20th of September, a new topic. Jerry will be on again, and uh, he'll be covering. We'll probably have a QA and a with you, Jerry. I think that would be a really good one. That's always, uh, you know, gets a lot of people. Uh, Absolutely. You know, on I'd be these happy calls. with that. We'll that. Yeah, and I, then we I can get some interaction. I want what to just say, thank, real quick, I, I just want to say thank you for, uh, Peter, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to uh, to have this webinar tonight. Um, I want to thank everybody who took the time to be here. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you kind of learned how to utilize these a little bit better and, you know, these tools. And I hope that you're able to take a simple tool and turn it into some big sales and some solid distributors. So thank you very much. And anybody who needs to get a hold of me, I'm pretty easy to get a hold of just uh, – let me know what I can do to help. If you have any questions about any of the materials, uh, if you have any suggestions about new materials, by all means, please let me know. I'm always open to any kind of new stuff um, that's going to help distributors be more successful. So and, thank you. And is the best way, Jerry, to get a hold of you is like the kongan1info.com. Is that a good place yeah, to it, find it, out it, how to get? My, my email address is gerald at powerfulh2o.com. That's going to okay. be the best one to get a hold of me at. So Gerald at PowerfulH2O.com. So from Jerry, Peter, and Blade Runner, guys, we uh, we wish you all the best for this week. Go get them and get those orders in. Start using these magazines. I mean, I use them, and uh, I know a lot of other people do, and they, they uh, flat out just work very, very well. So that's all for tonight, guys. We will see you in two weeks. Thanks, all right, Jerry, bye-bye. Have a great night.